What's up guys? I haven't seen you guys in a while. It's, I've been pretty busy with school, but it's summertime's here, so I've been working on the car. And I did a lot since the last time this is on an episode. Uh, I think the last episode was when I was giving an update, and I also said in that video I was going to buy a car, and I chose not to because I'm going to put all my money into this thing and get it done. So. Uh, today I'm going to show you how to seam weld a body. Last time I was in an episode, I said this is going to be like a drag car, but uh, I've been doing a lot of research with like my mechanical engineering studies, and I really like uh, race car setups. And I was like, why not make this thing like a road course car? Like it'll also be like drag car, like I can switch wheels and stuff and take it on the track. But um, I'm mainly building this thing up now it's for it to handle really good so I'm going to do upgrade suspension and stuff so like you see these seams right here these are all from the factory they'll get uh, basically the factory will get like stampings of steel and they'll spot weld it together and there's little spot welds like maybe one every inch spacing and those spot welds are fine for just daily driving but if you're going to be taking this thing around the track and pulling one G turns then those spot welds are going to let the body flex a little bit under heavy lateral accelerations and stuff. So, all right. so basically when the car is being uh, taken around a turn, there's a lot of forces put on the whole body. And say this is the cross section of your frame rail, and here's a piece of steel, and here's a piece of steel, and you have a little spot weld, there's going to be a shear and uh, that's going to let the body flex a little bit and that's going to mess up your suspension geometry and the way that the tire is contacting the road. So if, uh, if you can basically make the seam stronger then it's going to prevent any kind of body flex like that. So I'll show you guys what I've been doing lately. Um, I started on the passenger side. I pretty much have it done. Uh, so I have a good idea of what to do. So I'm going to do driver's side now. This is a part that sucks because it tears up your fingertips. Mike suggested why aren't you using like a dual action sander or a wire brush and a dual action sander won't get in the tight crevice on the seam and this, this surface right here, this gray, that's from wire brushing. So I need to get the surface scuffed so the best method I've found was just doing this and it, it tears up your fingertips and it hurts. In case uh, you guys are wondering, my next project is going to be that 80 Mustang. I don't think you guys have ever seen that. I'll be my next one. What are you going to do to it? Uh, I'd like to do a drift build. Yeah! Like, like so, long game. Uh, Yeah, I would like to do something like Mike did at the Supra. Like, I want to keep the, the exterior the way it is, like the, the robin egg kind of blue and it's a little bit of surface rust and Kind of looks like a turd, but I want to do a very nice suspension setup and very nice drivetrain and cage. really cool wheels in a cage. And I, w I think it'd be cool to do like a coyote with the turbo and the, the downpipe sticking out the fender, but Dude, I don't I know. Don't that's going to be so much power for that little thing. I know. <laughs> just a coyote. Yeah, I might just start out with a coyote because I feel like if I, if I start out with 800 horsepower or something, I'd probably hit another tree. <laughs> Uh, Mike is over there helping Rigo replace the radiator in the Saturn. His his pants are halfway down, so I can basically see his ass right now. I'm I sanded down these seams, and it hurts her fingertips really bad. And my fingertips are cracked and bloody, so I'm ready to do some welding. But first, I'm gonna mark off where I'm gonna weld, and I'm gonna do one inch increments like you saw in the shop before on the passenger side. So just for now, I'm just going to mark off this area and then I'll get to welding. And as you're going along, you want to kind of remark where your marks are because the heat and the wire brush kind of makes the marks go away. 
You can see right there, this steel is thicker than the steel up here, so when I'm welding, I keep the puddle, stayed on the thicker steel longer, and I quickly jump up to the, salt, or the thinner steel, jump back down, keep it in the thicker, go up and down, so you don't wanna keep all the heat directed on the thinner steel or else you'll blow holes. And all that smoke is from the, the factory uh, seam sealer coming out that's basically between the two metal pieces. Alright, Mike has to leave so he has to take the camera, but it's pretty straightforward. You just clean the area that you're going to weld, mark it off, and weld it. And that's all you really have to do. And I plan on doing the whole front clip, uh, the area where it attaches to the cow uh, and firewall area, and then some places along the floor and the rear. So it'll be a lot of welding but it should definitely make the whole unibody a little bit stiffer, so it'll handle better. It'll be pretty good lap times, hopefully.